Lejson i mërës o thios o patiro për të kratore pëshoj si vënotin të një gom shopin e men, amin. We ask you, Lord, to hear us and we pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Nin. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Marin Shepherd, Martin Dot Fimper, Ever Pet Nan Evo in Night of Nord of your Tempen Choice, Open Naughty Open Sotiris, Ospia Christos. She offered us keep us in a gun of her voice and air enough, are a hair enough, shop the near of FTS, where enough tea to the Narent and Chari, yet I own all thy. And so, on my interior of hope, was until I heard on him, I get to a fine in the old tiron tap and on him here in the venin jappy pantocrat or if choice been naughty. Ayo, a side of Robin Ella, Dabot El Kul, Abu Robin Alahna, Muhalis Nasu and Messiah Nashkura Kara Kula Halom and Agli Kula Hal, Wafi Kula Hal. نك سترت عندنا حفظتنا وانتنا إليك أشفقت علينا عضتنا وأتيت بنا إلى هذه الساعة Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of the wicked, the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest. Take them away from us and from all your people, from the soul of your daughter Salwa, and from this holy place that is yours. But those things which our good and prophet will provide for us, we have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. ارحمنا على الله كعبي
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with a steadfast love and mercy? The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the Son of Man. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence, but we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forever. طاقت نفسي إلى خلاصك وعلى كلامك انتظرت نفسي دائما في يديك أما شريعتك فلم أنساها تحيا نفسي وتسبحك وأحكامك تعينني celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. The grace of God the Father be with you all. Amen.
and make us worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. A reading according to St. Matthew, may his blessings be with us on men. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and, and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Oh, bow down before the Holy Gospel. Glory be to God forever. <laughs> the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. This soul, O Lord, of your daughter Salwa, for whom we are gathered, repose her in the kingdom of heaven. Open for her, O Lord, the doors of heaven. Accept her according to the greatness of your mercy. Open for her, O Lord, the doors of righteousness, that she may enter and find comfort. Open for her, O Lord, the doors of paradise, as you opened them to the thief. Open for her, O Lord, the doors of the kingdom, that she may share with the saints. Open for her, O Lord, doors of ease that she may chant with all the angels. Let her be worthy to see the light. Let the angels of light enter her into life. And let her be in the bosom of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Forgive the sins which were committed knowingly and unknowingly. For you, God, realize the weakness of humankind. Through your mercy, console those mourning, especially her family. Grant them patience and give them heavenly reward. The intercessions of Our Lady, St. Mary, all the ranks of the heavenly, let your mercy and help be with your people. Grant us all serenity. Establish us in your orthodox face. Be our victory, we who believe in you. We worship your Christ with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you are crucified and have saved us. If you are able, please join us in reciting the Creed. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, 
creator of heaven and earth, of all things certain and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not created, co-essential with the Father through whom all things are made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into the heavens and sits at the right hand of the Father. He shall come again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the life giver, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. So by the prophet. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the remission of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming age. Amen. O Lord, repose all their souls in the bosom of our holy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sustain them in a green pasture beside still waters in the paradise of joy, the place out of which grief, sorrow, and groaning have fled away in the light of your saints. Raise up their bodies also on the day which you have appointed according to your true promises, which are without lie. Grant them the good things of your promises, that which an eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have come upon the heart of man, the things which you, O God, have prepared for those who love your holy name. For there is no death for yourself, and but a departure, even if any negligence or heedlessness has of forsaking them, as men since were clothed in flesh and dwelt in this world, O oh, God, as a good one and lover of mankind, graciously accord, O oh Lord, to, re to repose and forgive them, your servant, the old Christians who are in the whole world, from sunrise to sunset and from north, or to east, and with them the soul of your daughter Salwa, each one according to his name and according to her name. For no one is pure from blemish, even though his life on earth is a single day. As for those, O oh Lord, whose souls you have taken repose them. And may they be worthy of the kingdom of the heaven. As for us all, grant us our Christian perfection, 
that will be pleasing unto you and give them and us a share and inheritance with all, all your sins. Now the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Today we are here to celebrate Selwa's life. I have a mixed feeling of joy and sadness. Joy as Selwa completed her strife, and she's in paradise. And yet, sadness, because we will miss her. Selwa loved and lived the Bible. I can say she lived the Bible applying what St. Paul said to the Philippians. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. How her conduct was worthy of the gospel of Christ so that she could be worthy to inherit the eternal life? The answer is she lived the Bible from the beginning to the end. It started from the beginning of the book of Genesis as the image and likeness of God. And also, as for Adam, for Hannah, she was a helper all through and finished her life according to the book of Revelation in which it is written, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. And in between, the beginning and the end, she lived, she lived her life as a daughter of Christ, applying his commandment, in which he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. We all have seen Salwa apply these two commandments in her life. As she loved the Lord her God from her heart, she was a faithful servant. She started serving from her young age at the church in Egypt and continued her service here in England. And she used to help and support everybody without exception. She was an, as an angel living among us. She used to support the needy in Egypt and here in England. And she's done that secretly. And God, who sees in secret place, rewarded her openly. Rewarded her, her work, for her service, for her blessed and successful family, and as a wife. As it is written in the book of the Proverbs, she was a virtuous wife. Her worth is far above rubies. And as David said in the psalm, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Selwa was a fruitful vine with fruits of meekness, love, care, purity of heart. And these characters were very obvious in her personality and her character. As a mother, as a mother, she lived, as Solomon said in the book of the Proverbs. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the way of her household. Yes, she did. She taught her children, 
the love of God. They loved him. They brought up to love the Lord Christ and to serve him and serve his church. Well done, Salman. And as a friend, again, as the book of the Proverbs says, a friend who sticks closer than a brother. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Yes, she loved everybody, and she was a sister of everyone. And at the time of adversity, you see her supporting everybody. Near the end of her life, the Lord allowed her to share him his suffering and to chant to St. Paul saying, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. She accepted illness with joy, patience, and thanksgiving. She is an icon of Christ. And when he, he com she completed her mission on earth, she was saying with St. Paul, I am having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. And I have heard her saying that. He told me that I want to close my eye and open them and be with Christ. So that's, that's what she wanted and she desired and she had her desire, the desire of her heart. And she heard the Lord telling her, come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And she had rest. Until she, she's been given a white robe and said to her, been said to her, rest a little while until the last day when she will heal the Lord. Say, hears the Lord saying to her, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I conclude with a few verses from the book of the Proverbs, in which it is written, her children rise up and bless her, and her husband also praises her. And as the church and friends, we all say, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Rest in peace, our beloved Sarah, in the paradise of joy, with the saints waiting the last day when we all enjoy the fulfillment of the Lord, the promise which he said in the Gospel of St. John, praying to the Father, saying, Father, I desire that they also, who you gave me, may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which you have, in, you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. We will, we will behold his glory. Not only that, but there is another promise. He said, and our Lord said it, and he will fulfill it. What he said to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. We are waiting and looking forward for this promise to be fulfilled for us all. At the end, on behalf of the Cathedral of St. George, the church councils, the deacons, Sunday school servant, congregation, I extend our condolences to Hani, Mira and Peter, Fadi and Marianne, and all the family and friends who will miss her, but we are sure where she is. May the Lord repose her soul in the paradise of joy and comfort us all. Glory be to God. Now, the 
family asked uh, Marcel to um, say a word on behalf of the friends. I stand here today speaking not only for myself, but for a great number of close friends who consider Salwa as a big part of their family. Salwa is a mother and wife, a sister, a friend, a Sunday school teacher, and a mentor, and a lot more to everyone. When the family approached me to put a eulogy together for Salwa, I knew it was not going to be an easy task. Salwa is a great person, a wonderful human being, whose life touched so many people in so many different ways. So I gathered my memories together over the, last, the past few days, and I asked her friends to give me two words to describe who Salwa is to them. Two words was the ask, but two words were never going to be enough to describe who Salwa is to her friends. Long messages was what I got. <laughs> I should have known better. I could go on for hours if I started to read all the messages I received. So rest assured, I'm not going to do that. They testified to, to a life lived with no other thought than to love and to love unconditionally. Love in a way that made everyone feel so special and valued individually. Constant word were love, grace, elegance, warmth, gentleness, constant smile, and an angelic voice. Described by many as an angel on earth, a proper lady, a most decent human being. She only whispered and never raised her voice, true image of Christ. And by, by some of her spiritual children, she was described as consistently graceful, incorruptible beauty, love and warmth, genuine and kind, a second mother, and many, many more. It is no surprise that I received an overwhelming number of messages. As for the, last 20, for the past 25 years and forever more, Salwa was and will continue to be a vital part of the life of this congregation. She loved this very place where we stand and we are gathered here today and felt at home amongst the saints and the people she loved. For her, it was home from home. She will always be remembered for providing much needed nourishment. A breakfast rota <laughs> that was not an easy task to do with us lot. We, I, give her grief over it. Ask her to drop it. We're hardly going to starve if you don't have one meal. But she would not do that. And you know why she wouldn't do it? Because apparently Abuna Shnuda would be very upset and she would <laughs> never upset Abuna Shnuda. <laughs> Birthday celebrations, never forgotten. Always accompanied by a lovely cake. I used to say she's a walking, talking um, calendar for birthday and special occasions. One of her friends, and you know who you are, asked, recently asked her, is my daughter turning 39 or 40 this year? <laughs> The daughter was not amused. <laughs> the vine is Salwa and Hani's family home, a mini church where we frequently gather to celebrate special occasions, sing songs of praises, worship, chat, laugh, and of course eat. Food is very important to all of us. When my kids were younger, they stood in front of Salwa's elaborate dining room table in complete amazement at the amount and variety of food on offer. One day, my daughter asked me to name some of the dishes. She's never seen what I know in her life. <laughs> she was about 10. I did tell her, these dishes are not good for you. Please don't like them. <laughs> my son felt the food was so alien that I had to take him to McDonald's on my way home to give, to give him his happy meal. Many loving warm memories and celebration at the vine, where as one of her spiritual daughters said, I would always cherish the love she offered me so generously, and her welcoming home that made me feel at home. 
I can only apologize on behalf of everyone for the mess we made in your amazing, perfectly organized house. I did do the dishes there, and there were lots of them. And who can forget the hours spent in your living room with Hany playing the violin, you leading us in worship, using your familiar green book. Totally committed, and I'd like to think you enjoyed it, despite our singing out of tune and the constant quabbling over the next hymn. They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, Fadi, and your talent for leading worship is clearly evident in you. I knew how meticulous Salwa was in, is with everything she does and how house proud, proud she is, but the fridge inventory on her phone with all the different variety of food, all labeled, all weighed, and dated was just a step too far. <laughs> Only Salwa could do that. We have tried to prepare ourselves for the last few months to this inevitable end, but it was Sal Salwa herself, with her quiet, gentle spirit, who comforted us and prepared us for accepting God's will and plan for her life. She remained faithful to the very end, her eyes focused on the cross. One of her friends wrote, her soft, lovely voice of those songs of praise are shaking the world and strengthening our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, where she ran to so she could be in his arms. To another friend, she said, I just want to close my eyes and open them to find myself in the bosom of Christ. She knew exactly and with confidence where she was going. Salwa, you are the angel we all had the good fortune to know. Thank you for having such an impact in our, on our lives and for making it rich with love and friendship. I personally, as I'm sure many of you have to, learned a lot from you over the years and more so during the last month and weeks. I can't promise you to be as soft-spoken as you or have your elegance and warm nature, nor can I even attempt to take on the baking mantle that legacy lives in your beautiful daughter, Mira. But I promise to remember you always and to find memory in the beauty of life. We will continue to sing together. My dear friend, you are no longer in pain, no longer in suffering. You are free and in glory in paradise. The love you gave is no longer limited by physical presence. You will always be remembered, and until we meet you again, keep your promises to pray for each and every one of us. And I'd like to leave you with the words of this poem. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey has just begun. Life holds so many facets, this earth is only one. Just think of her as a resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort, where there are no days and years. Think how she must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness will pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched. For nothing loved is ever lost, and she was loved so much. I also have the privilege of receiving two messages um, which I'll read for you on behalf of Mona, Henny's sister, and one from Safa, Salwa's sister, Salwa's brother. So, Mona wrote, Salwa, Salawa Halawa, <laughs> Salwiti, Habibti, Pesbusa, and apparently if you need to know about this, you ask Henny. She's my beloved sister, my soulmate, my best friend. There is no, li no one like her or even could come close. Some of you who lived in the 60s remember the song, Those were the days, my friend, we thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day, we'd live the life we choose. We really used to laugh a lot. We make fun of anything and everything, including ourselves. Those wrinkles, those gray hair, that painful arthritic knee. 
We loved to sing hymns together while Hanny played the violin, enjoying and looking at us in great joy, then make fun of me when I go out of tune. We thought we are still young. We planned things, we wished for things, but we never thought the time has conspiracy against our dreams. Funny moment I want to share with you. I love gardening and playing in soil. So once I dared to ask Selva to plant her flowers, it's good therapy and relaxing, I uttered. She nodded her head so calmly with a lovely wink and gentle laugh. Mom told me never to play in dirt and I will listen to my mom. <laughs> she was such a lady, full of poise, wisdom, elegance, and grace. Selva is irreplaceable, unique, unforgettable, inco incomparable, amazing, beautiful inside out, pure. What you see is what you get, honest, faithful, meek, humble and long-suffering, great cook, great cook and baker. We see the apple didn't fall far from the tree, my dear Mira. Always très chic and élégant, <laughs> has to be a bit of French. I think it must have been a documented event when Salwa purchased her first jeans trousers. <laughs> she was a wonderful daughter who stood by her parents and, and served them in their late days with great respect and supernatural strength and stamina. As a sister, she loved her brothers Sammy and Safwat with all respect and true, genuine love. As a wife, I don't think time will be enough to write novels about her deep love to Hany their cute love story topped with sacrifices. How she looked up after Haney for over 33 years after his massive heart attack in the late 80s, serving him, loving him, giving him all what she had to offer with her adorable smile, with lots of compassion and patience. As a mother, her wonderful successful children speak out of the mother she is. I don't believe there is anyone who met Salwa and didn't love her or anyone who had hardship with her. I really can't express my sorrow and mourn and mourning you. I'm still in shock and disbelief. Can't imagine I won't call you daily to chat and exchange every little thing that happened in our life. And how Hany and Samir always wondered where do we find the daily stories and all the jokes and laughter. Salwa Habibti. I know you are rested in heaven from all your pain and suffering in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ with our mother Virgin Mary chanting with angels and saints with your dad and mom. Heaven for sure gained an angel while we lost a gem. Enjoy it my beloved. You earned your wings my sweet guardian angel. Pray for us my beloved sister and friend and please visit me until we meet. Farewell. Monatanius. The next message is from Safwat, um, Salwa's brother. Dear all, those of, you, those of you who managed to be physically present and those who are following online, we are here today not to mourn but to celebrate. Celebrate the life of our beloved Salwa, a remarkable being who has touched us all with her beautiful soul. Salwa is a unique example of someone who is only capable of love. Generous in her feelings, a natural leader who gave unreservedly to her family, her friends, and her larger community. Salwa's attitude to life has never been anything but positive, never critical, always supportive, thankful to the last moment of her life in spite of all that life had thrown at her. We're here today not only to celebrate Salwa's life, but also the love that has been showered at her from those around her. Hany, who has given her all that he could and more to keep her as comfortable as can be. Mira and Fadi, Peter and Marianne, who stayed close to her till the end, caring and loving. We are here to celebrate the dedication of her friends, some of whom traveled from far to help as much as they could some who give away all their other commitments or duties to stay close to her and care for her, and some who at moment notice would drop everything if help is needed. I was privileged and fortunate enough to spend some quality time with her before her departure, to witness firsthand 
all this love that has engulfed her. Something I've been touched and honored to see, touch and feel. Please join me to celebrate all of this, her life, her family, her friends and community, all of whom give back to her the tons of love and care that she has extended to them over the years. Let's celebrate her legacy of love, which should be an example for all of us to follow. Thank you, Safra Petri. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. I'm not quite sure how I could possibly follow that. Um, and it epitomizes the spirit that was around Salwa, not only in the past few months, but throughout her life. She was a magnet for love. She brought out the best in others. She was kind and gracious. She was a living filter that took away the pain, the anxiety, the uncertainty, and planted kindness, care, love, patience, and graciousness. In the last few days, I was thinking of a passage to to share. And the first one that came to me is the one I'm going to share with you now. It comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, and it speaks of the prophecy speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And in my Bible, fittingly titled, Behold My Servant. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him. I will declare justice to all the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench till he sends forth justice to victory. This speaks of our Lord Jesus Christ, and there is no greater legacy that any of us can leave behind than to walk in the footsteps of our Lord. In my mind, when I thought of Salwa, this was the first passage I thought of. Not only someone who was kind and gracious and generous and loving, because that in itself is enough, but someone who shared that with others who gave hope to others, who encouraged others, and who taught others to love. I've had the privilege of being mentored by many, many people, many good people, from popes and patriarchs to bishops to priests to lay people. But one of the greatest examples of ministry I will ever have, and I hope that, where I, can, that I will continue to honor, is that which I have learned from Salwa. I learned from her. I learned that a kind word is what is needed at any time. I learned that a quick phone call, even to say happy birthday, is something that leaves unforgettable memories and gives a sense of care. I'm not quite sure how she find, found out even about my birthday. <clears throat> which I thought was a well-kept secret, but she did. And I assume that probably everyone in this church has had one of those calls. But that's the kind of person she was. It's the kind of person who she will continue to be in our hearts. The beauty of our faith is that the body may die, but the legacy lives on, because the spirit lives on. I'm always reminded at funerals, of the words of the angels when the disciples came and Mary came and they were crying at the door of the tomb and suddenly there was this great proclamation why do you seek the living amongst the dead 
He is not here. He is risen. Salwa left us over a week ago. We are here today merely to celebrate her life. We are here to pray for her family and her friends. And the term family is quite a loose one within this community. Although Salwa was the epitome of graciousness and kindness and humility, she was one of the founding members of this community. Even when I came, when I arrived on the 28th of December, 1995, and I celebrated my first New Year's Eve on the 31st of December, 1995, with a certain young lady with a rebellious streak who was leading charge on a group of young people. She will remain nameless. Salwa, Hani, their families, Mina, Shehenda, Naira, Nagi. Many of you were there. And that has been our family. So your loss is our loss. But your joy is our joy. We know that this world is a journey. We're not supposed to be here forever. And we know that some people are gifted to us to impact our lives. And those people in particular will never, ever be around for long enough. Salo was one of those people. She impacted us, all of us. She taught us. She led us. She had a heart for everyone. You know, we always at funerals say, such a kind person, I've never heard this person say a bad word about anyone. And of course, we're not lying. There may be the, f the, the, the very few exceptions. But I can genuinely, hand on heart, and digging through my memory, say for a fact, I have never heard her say a bad word about anyone. She lived incredible struggles. She was courageous, kind, and generous, but never said a bad word. I think I saw Sarwa lose her temper once, which, compared to most of us, was almost like a very small sneeze. <laughs> and that was it. But that was the extent of her anger. She just couldn't do it. She didn't know how to do it. She wasn't capable of doing it. God didn't give her those capabilities, and we thank him for not giving her those capabilities because she taught us how also to be kind and restrained and patient. She will always be the example of a servant. In today's gospel, which we read at all funerals when our sisters depart, we read of this wonderful woman in Bethany who breaks the alabaster flask, and the fragrance of her action spreads through the whole house. And the fragrance of Salwa's life spreads through not only this house of worship, not only through this community, but through the world with everyone who's joining us around the world. Because anyone who has dealt with her would know that fragrance. Funerals are a good opportunity for us to honor and support the family. But let's make this one a turning point in our lives. To honor the legacy of our sister and friend. From this day forth, let's commit ourselves to being more like her. I know I will. Let's not let this just be another occasion with heightened emotions that then calm down. There was this wonderful movement a few years ago, what would Jesus do? And I hope I'm not being heretical here. But thing going forth today, let's ask ourselves, what would Selva do? What would she do? And especially with those we don't like, because our Lord himself said, you know, what good is it if you're doing good to those who love you? Anyone does that. What would she do? And what will we do? We must always take every opportunity in our lives to learn. And for this day to be impactful, let us make it a day of learning and a day of change, a day of legacy, a day of la lasting memory, and a day of impact. Because when we do that, it will impact others. 
Just as she has touched our lives, you will touch others, and they will touch others, and so on and so forth. In the last days, last weeks, Salwa also made manifest something which was incredible. The spirit of fellowship that she had nurtured over years became manifest. It was visible. People who were around her, her close friends, her sisters, who served her with all their time, all their emotions, giving everything they had and more, giving every moment, every waking moment, and even those that should have been asleep. And that is the legacy we find. And that is the example we will always have. As I close, if you feel so minded, I want you to close your eyes and have Salwa's distinctive voice in your head. Looking through some poems, I found this one. I thought it sounded like her. I'm home in heaven, dear ones. Oh, so happy and so bright. There is a perfect joy and beauty and everlasting light. All the pain and grief is over. Every restless tossing has passed. I'm now in peace forever, safely, and home at last. There is work still waiting for you, so you must not idly stand. Do it now. Do it now while life remains and you rest in God's land. When that work is completed, he will gently call you home. Oh, oh the rapture. Oh, the rapture of that meeting. Oh, the joy to see you come. There is no more fitting way for us to conclude than with the words of Fadi and Mira. And uh, so, Fadi, Mira. and um, Saidna, your words you did very well <laughs> um, I tried to write something down but it was all so weak say about mum that hasn't already been said but I wanted to just write some thoughts from me and from Fadi she is and will always be in our thoughts as the heart of our family and community she is so loved by so many. She is a wonderful daughter, sister, wife, mother, and grandmother, as well as a dedicated friend to so many. This last 10 days has been so difficult. We've all missed her so much. Keep thinking of the small memories 
her gentleness, her kindness, her beautiful smile. I keep thinking of when she was going to set the front door with her little tilting smile and her happiness. So I'd like to share some parts of her life over the last few months. As you know, as you may know, Mum was diagnosed with cancer in October last year. I think she knew right away that this would be the beginning of the end of her time in this world. I think we were all in denial. I pressed her to take to take the chemo and go for trials and try and save her life, and she did it reluctantly for us. Unfortunately, it didn't work. And in February, we were told that she was now palliative and it was only a matter of time. Through the journey, Mum handled it all with grace and elegance for which she was so well known. Her concern was for us, for Fairdy and I and Dad and her grandchildren. And Mary and Fairdy and Mary and Peter. She was sad for us. Sad that, sad that she wouldn't see the children grow and she wouldn't be there to support us. She was never sad for herself, ever. She knew from the start that although she was leaving this world, she was going to the most wonderful place. She knew she was going to be free of pain and suffering to meet our beautiful Lord. She was never scared. Over the last weeks, her suffering increased and she needed more care, which was provided by her incredible friend. And you all know who you are. We couldn't have done it without you. And people talk about friends who are family. And honestly, we met them all these last few months and years, but it was so clear to us over the last weeks. She maintained her dignity and humour throughout. In the last week, specifically on Friday, we spent the day together, mum in her bed, friends and family around her. We sang hymns, Betty on the guitar. We showed her a video made by some of her friends with memories over the years that she enjoyed. Some people I didn't even know and she could tell me who they were and how they knew each other. It was amazing. And even and that evening we said goodbye. We all said goodbye. She told us not to be scared if we found that she'd gone to heaven overnight. We were ready. She was ready. And then on Saturday morning, much to her disappointment, she woke up and said, and I listened to him. <laughs> Am I still here? She was ready. She wanted to go. She was disappointed that she hadn't met Christ in the night. She was an inspiration to us and will always be. And on Tuesday evening, after a long and difficult day, she was released from her body and went to paradise to be with her Lord. And on Tuesday, we were relieved for her. We were all genuinely happy and relieved that this amazing, faithful woman had ended her suffering here on earth. Since then, it's been a roller coaster of emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, relief, nostalgia, remembering all the good times. We know that it will take time for it to stop being so raw and painful, but the help and support of all of you, all of our friends, we know will help us through this journey. Over the years, Mum has given us so much of herself. Over almost 43 years of marriage and almost 40 years of being a parent, she's lived her life for us. If you know our family well, you know the challenges we've given her. Dad's health. My rebellious younger years, 
Birdie's inability to leave home. <laughs> she supported us all through it. She gave up herself freely and unconditionally. Mum is a unique and beautiful soul. There are so many things that make Mum who she is, which Marcel has told us all about. As a grandmother, nothing was too much for our children. First to Jacob nine years ago, she would drive an hour to spend time with him without moaning or grumbling, take him to the park, play football with him. And then when Ezra arrived two years later, she loved him just as much. At holidays, she'd take them to zoos and playgrounds, anything they wanted. And even over the last few months when she was unwell, if baby Tally wanted to get up and dance, she would drag herself up off the couch where she was having a nap and get up and dance with Tully. Even after she passed, Jacob and Ezra prayed for her. And their prayer on Wednesday evening went something like this. Dear Jesus, thank you that put us in such a lovely place. Please let her have lots of fun. Please help her to find her mum and dad. Please help us to be strong and not super sad that we won't see her again. Please help us to protect Gidohim. The kids have been so blessed to know her for a few short years, but their memories of her will never be forgotten. taught me how to be a mum to my beautiful boys and thirdly to be a dad to the amazing Tally. She taught me to be patient most of the time, <laughs> kind and generous. She taught me to always look to the Lord in good and bad times. She taught me to bake and to cook delicious food and even as a teenager when I didn't want to listen. <laughs> She stuck by me so that when I was a little older, I learned the value of what true love can do. I learned more by her example than her words. I learned how important it is to have a secure and loving home. She is the glue that holds many of us together. She will be so deeply missed by so many of us here, not least by her loving grandchildren, myself and Peter, Freddie and Marianne, and of course my dad. Please keep us in your prayers always. We miss you so much, Mum. I always will. I got through it. <laughs> I just have one. At the back of the church on your way out, we printed these little cards we used to take home with a picture of Mum. As we've spoken about, Mum is well known for her baking and her food. <laughs> so on the back, there is a recipe for her, fav for her marble cake that you can all take home and make. We also made some little tea marble cakes for you to pick up on your way out. So you have a little piece to take home with you. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, also at the back of the church, there's um, if anyone would like to join us for the burial or a small gathering after, there's some information at the back of the church. You can pick up the leaflet on your way up. I don't want to break the mood, but one of the most iconic things we've just realized, we've had a little problem here, that if Sarah was here, no one would have a shortage of tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray.
estos minuti. O King of peace, grant us your peace, bestow your peace upon us, and forgive our sins. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the majesty, and the blessings. Conclude for us these prayers, grant repose to your daughter Salwa, comfort to her family, and to all gathered here, and hear us, and we pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power. And now may the love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, and the peace of the Lord be with you.